Hey guys, we're Dallas and Amy, and we're traveling the country for six months with our two dogs, Quinn and Sophie, somewhere around here. And we just left Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we learned a lot of different things. So today we're gonna to be talking about 10 things that nobody tells you about going to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Pinon nuts are something that I have never heard of, but they're actually pine nuts that are really popular in Albuquerque. Um, we saw them a lot in coffee, sometimes chocolate, sometimes cookies but really tasty and definitely a unique flavor that you should definitely try. Yeah, I had it in a few different places um, in, in coffees and it is like a nuttier flavor. It was really, really good though and definitely like a unique taste. Um, so was, it, I highly recommend trying it. Okay, second up is that chilies are everywhere and I'm not just talking about the restaurant, but there are some chilies restaurants. So if you love that blooming onion, you will get a blooming onion there. But <laughs> I'm talking about red and green chili. They're hanging around all sorts of like restaurants on the outsides drying and you see them just pretty much everywhere. They're in all sorts of food too. So if you don't like spicy food, um, like this one, you might wanna watch out when you're ordering. Like if it says has red chili, at least ask the server or whoever you're getting the food from um, if it's that spicy or not. And it, you can still find like foods that, you know, have it that aren't that spicy and it's more of like a chipotle type kind of smokier chili taste to it. But just be aware that it can be really, really, really hot food if it says it has chili in it. And I'm talking everywhere, like even McDonald's I saw advertising it with it in it, stuff we don't see at home. It's a regional flavor for sure and it's absolutely everywhere. So just go ahead and assume that chili is gonna be inside of all of your food. You've all seen the hot air balloons in the air in the beautiful New Mexico sky, but Hot air balloons are actually a big deal all year round in Albuquerque. There's a balloon fiesta in October, which is the big event, but there's also smaller events throughout the year that we actually got to be a part of. After visiting the balloon museum, uh, shout out to Mary, we were invited to the Friends and Lovers Balloon Rally. Yeah, it was really, really fun. There were over a hundred balloons there and the people were like super welcoming. It was a very family friendly event too. We saw lots of kids running around, lots of people with cameras taking cool photos and stuff. And it was just super unique to see. It, it reminded me of like going to like a car meet or like mm -hmm. a car show. Um, it was kind of the same, a similar crowd I'd say. It's a really nice community of people. They were actually gonna take us up in their hot air balloon, but unfortunately we couldn't go because the wind was wrong and anytime the weather is good, they are flying balloons. So it doesn't have to just be during the fiesta season. Yeah, it's a very, very common thing to see there. So when we got to Albuquerque, we were thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm hoping we get to see like one. We saw so many hot air balloons in the air. It was awesome. So I, like many of you, grew up on tons of cartoons, including Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner was always one of my favorites. And I was excited because I actually got to see a real Roadrunner. They're pretty cute and kind of fluffy when they curl up. We saw them running across the street, so that was pretty exciting for us. They're Definitely actually, like a bucket list moment for me. Yeah. One of those, I know it's a small one, but a small bucket list check. I was like, a red runner ran across the road. It was awesome. They're actually the state bird of New Mexico, so. And I thought they were gonna be like, I mean, I've never seen them, I guess, in books and stuff. I don't know, I'd never really noticed them, but I thought they were gonna be about the size of like a flamingo, but they're not. They're much, much smaller. Um, but yeah, they're super adorable little things and they are so fast. Like runner is the right word for them for sure because they are quick little buggers. We're from Southern California, so we have had a lot of great Mexican food. When we came to Albuquerque, we expected to have more great Mexican food, but the food here is not Mexican, it's new Mexican. So it's actually a little bit of a different style. Totally, I thought it was gonna be kind of similar like Tex-Mex where it was gonna be a mix between Mexican food and American food, but it's not. It's actually more of a mix between Mexican food and Native American food because that's who was there when the Spanish were there and the, the two flavors mixed together and you get this Southwestern New Mexican food that is so good. Definitely recommend trying sopapillas, which is basically fried bread, really good with honey. And you can actually get this free at some restaurants. We recommend going to Cocina Azul and then give it to you as a, almost as a dessert. And then I also recommend, I can't pronounce the dishes, but there they have this marinated pork that's been marinated for two days in red or green chili sauces. And it is just, my mouth is watering, seriously. <sighs> and the service there was so, so great. They're not sponsoring this. I wish they were, but they're not sponsoring this video or anything. But the service was great. And when I was ordering it, she's like, oh, that's a great dish. You should get it as an enchilada though. And I was like, okay. So I got it as an enchilada and it was like bigger than my head right? 
and I cut it in half, which I never do at dinner or meals or anything. I always eat like almost everything on my plate, but I brought half home, ate it the next day and was full again. So really, really good um, portion sizes and everything like that. It seemed like that was pretty common. The portion sizes were fairly large throughout everywhere we ate. A lot of great seasoning, great flavors, and New Mexican cuisine is definitely something unexpected that we were super happy to uh, have the chance to taste. Next up is the weather. The weather is really unpredictable. Um, at least it was when we were there in February 2020. I mean, we got snow. We were not expecting snow. It sounds like they get about 11 inches of snow a year in Albuquerque. So we actually got to be there when they got snow, which was unexpected and pretty cool for these California kids. And the dogs loved it. When we were leaving town, we found even more snow because we went up and over the mountain on our way to Austin, Texas. And it was like, I mean, it was so fun to watch these little guys run around in it. It was so cool. But you get a lot of rain or cold. Like it was really, 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 really cold there. Like, like 20 degrees. <laughs> like 20 something degrees, yeah. Not expected. I knew that would be that at night. Deserts typically are very cold at night and very warm in the day, depending on the season, but it was cold the whole time. So just be ready if you're planning to come to Albuquerque. Um, bring a jacket or at least check the weather forecast before you go. Yeah, and you might want to check that weather forecast every day because it could change fairly quickly, it seems. You wouldn't expect a small town in New Mexico to be such a technology hub, but it is. Did you know that Microsoft was actually founded in Albuquerque? It's amazing because they have all of these sort of firsts. Uh, for example, they were the first place in the United States to have a Bitcoin machine, which was actually in a cigar bar. Another first was that the first nuclear bomb ever exploded or tested was in New Mexico. It's at what's called the Trinity site. We didn't go to it because it literally is just like a plaque on like a big pile of rocks or like a pillar in the middle of the desert. Obviously that's where you would want to test the nuclear bomb. But back when they were testing and making Fat Man and Little Boy, all of that testing and everything was done in secret and it was done out in the New Mexico desert and it was called uh, gadget and they used the word gadget for the third bomb so that, that no one would be using the word bomb or explosive because of the secrecy surrounding it. And we went and visited the Nuclear Science and History Museum. Very fascinating place. We have a whole video on that too up here. Um, you can check out too, but that was really, really interesting to see. It's a definite somber piece of history, really of world history right there in New Mexico. I don't watch tons of TV. I'm more of a movie guy, but when I watch shows, I really get into them and I loved Breaking Bad. So I was super excited to be in Albuquerque and get to go around and see a lot of the filming locations that are still there. So they used real spots, like a real car wash for Walter's uh, you know, work where he was uh, originally employed at. And then also at like, you can go see Walter Walter White's house. There is kind of a, a little bit of a interesting lady that lives there. If you go on TripAdvisor, you can read all about that. But you know, just be respectful. If you go by her home, it is her home. But we went around and got to see those sites, which was which was cool for me as a fan. Um, they even have like donuts at Rebel Donut. Loved the donuts there. They had the Blue Sky Donut, and it's got like rock candy on it and stuff, like the Heisenberg. Um, so really interesting to see that how many years after like uh, it's been seven years since the show ended Seven years and it's still a really big part of kind of the tourism culture there and people were pretty friendly about it They didn't totally love it They didn't totally hate it It seemed that they're connected to that because originally Breaking Bad was gonna be filmed in California in Riverside But because of taxes shocker uh, they, they left and they went and filmed in Albuquerque and that's why it was all based there But you can see a ton of stuff there. There's tours and stuff Still a really big deal. They actually just opened a Breaking Bad store in January 2020, uh, seven years after the show ended, yeah. which is pretty, pretty amazing and really shows you that they still embrace their Breaking Bad history. Albuquerque has a pretty cool, very vibrant art scene. We were able to go to First Fridays, which is uh, the first Friday of every month. They have a big art show and they open up galleries across the downtown area where people can show their work, their photos, and uh, just a lot of really cool people in that community. Uh, driving through Albuquerque was interesting for me. Coming from California, we have fairly high speed limits um, and all throughout, almost everywhere I drove, it was like 35 miles an hour. So it was kind of nice though, because it makes it easy when you're not from a place to be able to like look around and see where you're at and kind of get your bearings without having to be so worried about like everybody zooming past you. People were driving fairly mellow. Just a slower culture there and you don't have to worry about getting in an accident so much, which was really nice. Okay. 
Okay, so those are the 10 things that nobody tells you about Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we really enjoyed our time there, really loved it. And that was just our second stop on our six month road trip with our pups. Next up is Austin, Texas. Can't wait to check out a ton of stuff there. We're gonna have a bunch of videos, so remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. See y'all later. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs>